Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, uh, for today's draw with me, I kind of wanted to do almost like a music video study or a music video redraw. And the reason why I'm calling it kind of like a study is because whenever I do kind of one of those music video kind of redraws, I, I treat it more like a study because I'm trying to look at like the background elements, I'm looking at the foreground elements and trying to make uh, sure I can portray it in a similar way or try to capture the atmosphere. Like you can kind of choose what you want to focus on. Um, even for this one, like Mingyu is obviously in the focus. I wanted to play around with the background because the background and the foreground were heavily um, blurred uh, with Mingyu in the focus. Now I believe I did the start to finish with this one, but um, I've done previous ones in the past. I'll leave them in the description if I remember. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to do another one, uh, and this time I wanted to do one of Rocket Punch, and it's based off of their- or not based off, I took the screenshots from their music video Fiore, which is their Japanese single. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take an A5 canvas, I'm gonna flip it around. I'm not gonna really care too much about aspect ratio, because I'm gonna crop in a little bit too, but, um, you can see like I took a lot of screenshots here of ones that potentially I would like to draw. Like I'm focusing here on more like atmosphere and lighting is what I like about this one. I like this one, obviously lighting, foliage. Um, this one's really pretty too. I would like to do this one too because it's just like a really close up of her face with the flowers is really cute. I'm gravitating towards these ones. So it's going to be overexposed for you guys, but <clears throat> yeah, something like this also I really like. The light hitting on this side, the light hitting on this side. I do like this one too, but I'm also biased to Yonhi, so... But I think I want to do this one. So this is of Sohi, and I kind of want to do the blurred umbrella with a bit of a pattern of like petals, and then we can have this part in focus. And I really like how she's um, lit like this, because another one I do want to do is this one. Which one is it? This one, because I think it would be pretty to do a like a profile. And we could play around with the background so i'm kind of i'm kind of debating we could do this one i think it might be a good choice but i do like this one a lot actually let's do this one because because it's suhyun's profile i can show you guys um what i usually do to kind of like stylize these kinds of scenes or anything like how i would do it because the good thing about studies like this is that you're basically drawing it in your style so you can kind of focus on what you want to focus Yes, but I highly recommend if you haven't listened to Fiore, I will leave it in the description so you guys can listen to it and check it out. What is going on? I'm trying my best to do this. I don't- I also don't draw females too often, so this is gonna be good practice for me. So I'm just gonna put in some basic shapes. And then I'm gonna flush out the face because I like focusing on the face a lot. So the reason why I picked this music video is because I really enjoy the song, but also the aesthetic of the music video is very pretty. So I'm gonna tilt this, put this in a little bit more for females than males just because i tend to draw things a little bit sharper and a little bit too refined i feel like and i know when people draw like um a little bit more of like stylized anime which i don't really like doing because not only that your mouse looks really disconnected like this doesn't make sense i do this for my chibi sometimes but that's because like it's more deformed in that sense i love the last time i did a like a female profile <laughs> Probably Barbara. But I also think like this is just a good way to get practice in uh, without having to think too much about creating something technically new. Like you can kind of work on this you know, to see how the composition is made, lighting, and it can help you learn how to stylize the things you want to stylize. Her eyes almost look blue in this shot. I'm not sure if it that she's wearing colored contacts, but I might color them as like a grayish blue. Okay, let's get in some of her 
of their features as well as just hair in general. So I also picked this because I don't do very well, I don't think, with drawing very wispy front bangs, like very thin front bangs, which means I have to make sure that the forehead is very clearly indicated because it is going to be showing. See, this is her end of her jawline, which means her ear is about here. Her ear is like half covered, so I'm not gonna put so much detail, but I want it enough to indicate that the ear is there, as well as that she has earrings. Zoom in a little. I'm gonna have to pick out some strands because her bangs are really thin and delicate. And I don't really want to lose that by overcrowding it at the top. I feel like I don't draw, because I don't draw females like a lot, I feel like I miss out on a lot of these hairstyles. They're a little bit more on the longer side since I draw a lot of males who have a lot of like shorter hairstyles usually. Like I said, you can focus on whatever you want to focus on whenever you're doing something like this since it is a study. Or I'm treating it like a study. You can actually make it like an actual study if you want to like break down the compositions and stuff or redline the figure, try to figure it out a little bit more. There's like enough detail in the flowers for me to see but also not enough because they're all like pure white. <laughs> Just like that. I'm gonna try to lighten these up. So I'm trying to clean up as I go, uh, but there's a lot of areas where I'm still unsure how I want to to leave in the lines. I think how I sketched it out earlier was probably more accurately uh, proportioned. Cause right now everything's kind of in a weird state. <laughs> I'm more worried about the neck because the thing about usually drawing stylized more like anime-esque necks, females tend to have like much more thinner necks but if you're doing more like realism or like semi-realism, obviously you're not going to draw the neck probably that small but this makes it look a little awkward. Because I think that one problem I have is that I jut the face too out. Okay, we're gonna leave it like this and then I will now add color. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do for the most part. I'm going to duplicate this just to keep a spare. I will set this to multiply and I'm gonna make this fairly saturated and bright just to keep that airier uh, look but we are gonna add the background in first so I'm actually gonna add in a super duper pale blue first now backgrounds are not my strong suit but I think I can kind of manage a little bit so let's get kind of like our almost like a horizon line i also need something like this lighter areas we also want more darker a little bit more saturated cooler greens here and i know some of these are actually probably like a bush or something here And then we'll also add like a lighting source and stuff um, afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna add a new layer and we're gonna get some of these tree-like shapes into 
here. A lot of this for me is trial and error, like honestly. <laughs> you could probably take more time to really focus on the background if you want. I kind of want to capture the atmosphere if I can. So I'm going to have to play around with some uh, adjustment layers too. I can see some branches coming in as well. So we can do that after, but I think that's after I blur a lot of this background out. I can see some areas which I don't like, so let's fix these. I actually think it would have been easier for me to erase what I don't want. Since a lot of these shapes are actually a lot like circular. So I usually don't use this brighter greens, I feel like. I usually try to knock it back. Or if I want to make greens look a little bit more vibrant, I lean it towards blue for the shadows. So this actually has a lot of vibrant greens in it. these. We do need more pockets of this almost brownish green color here. Okay, so I think this is enough. So what I'm gonna do is add lighting. I'm thinking I want to add it, I guess I could add it on top. So addition, I'm gonna pick more of a, a cooler greeny yellow, like a neon yellow. Make it darker. Kind of imitate some of these shapes here. And then I'm gonna have to add... Oh, I should have added the other branches probably. But this kind of helps make it look like uh, the light's kind of peering through a little bit more. So I'll probably blur it and I even might motion blur it a little bit so we can kind of stagger some of these areas let me try the opposite where we blur it afterwards so i'm gonna do gaussian blur first then motion blur yeah that kind of helps a little bit more it is a little too bright so Or maybe I'll have to add it separately, so we won't motion blur it. Blur it. Well, let's knock back these. Knock it back even more. And then I'll add kind of the light scattering almost, just a little bit. I always think it's fun to play with lighting if you can. Some people like making stuff like really glow. I like doing rim lighting a lot, um, even though it's a little bit of a crutch for me. But I always like how rim lighting looks. Downwards. It's most likely I'm not gonna budge them anymore. Okay. I can see some thinner looking branches here. They retain their shape a little bit more than the stuff in the background, which is why I'm going to blur it on its own there, so we can kind of fix the intensity and all of that. You can do how things, how, you can do things how you would want to. And then we have lighter kind of green leaves here. I might want to use the sharp render so you can get some sharper edges. Now, I'm not even sure if these are supposed to be more in focus. 
the ones that I'm putting in right now, or they're supposed to be a little less in focus. Okay, and now uh, I'm gonna blur this. Now hopefully it's not gonna, I'm not gonna blur it as much as the other ones. Uh, let's see, how do I wanna do this? I also kinda want to, And then for this one, I am going to clip, set it to add. Just a little bit until that it kind of disappears in this area. Because it kind of does in the other one too. Just a few more. So I just want the shapes to feel a little bit more organic because I had these ones very similar looking. Okay, we're leaving it. We're leaving it and I might add more foliage here. Okay, we're, we're, we're done with the background. <laughs> I am not gonna fudge around with it too much longer. Let's move down. Okay, let's color Suyun. So... I don't know if it's because of my phone, but it, she does read a little bit more yellowy here. And then we can transition her... The warmth of her face, I guess, from almost like an orangey pink. So even though Suyin is in the focus, I am going to probably duplicate her layer afterwards. And blur the the right side so we can make that that shoulder and kind of like the hair recede a lot more or like a baby pink i guess not a baby pink it's a little bit more saturated than how i would usually just indicate the lips so i'm changing some things up i'm making so some things are going to be like stylistic choices like here i'm making the edge of their eyes a little bit more of this pink color Knock it back a little bit. So usually when I color the skin, I usually color the skin first, first of all. Uh, but I will try to lock the layer so I can kind of keep everything contained, especially like these edges. You can see that there's some areas that uh, would benefit from me taking my time to kind of spruce up before we lock it. So sometimes when I do eyes and profile, I give them too much of like their sclera showing, like the white part of their eye. So I'm gonna be a little bit more mindful. Not over exceeding that part, especially like in the front part, like portion of her eye. And I said I wanted to give her like bluish gray eyes. I faded to purple. I just want it to be a little bit warmer. Okay, so her hair color. So her hair color is brown. I can see blues and greens in her hair too. So, but her hair is actually fairly bright where it's hitting, getting hit by the light. So I'm gonna do that first. Okay, and then we'll knock it back and do more of a, a cooler brown. Browns are sometimes hard for me to differentiate where, uh, how warm or cool I should make it. I think I, I always change it up for Masaki. I think I usually go for a warmer brown for him. Uh, even though before I used to draw him with much more cooler browns. But I think it's also because his color scheme used to be much cooler. But right now it's more warm. Like it used to be more of a, like a purpley blue for his sweater. So I don't know if I made this dark enough, but I'm just going to block this in and I am going to choose kind of like this kind of color. I can see this kind of color in her hair. It's just, I don't want it to be too prominent. Like I still want it to look natural-ish. Yeah, I might have to knock back her hair even more. I just noticed that, yeah, it doesn't read the same. Okay, 
and then we can add a little bit of highlights after kind of fix the shape of this and darken this up because yeah that looks like a lot of a darker almost a darker blue but you can see like after i add the blue in so let's say i take like a blue on top of the brown right so it still reads very blue but when i pick it up you can see now it's in the purple range i don't have a good eye for mixing those colors which is why i rely a lot on opacity This is going to be very bright. So even though I'm making it really bright right now, or not really bright, I'm making it fairly bright right now, we're going to really intensify it at that rim lighting. Which I'm also going to do for her, her little flowers here. I think this is what I'm actually going to dread the most, uh, trying to clean up and try to make it look a certain way. Cause like I said, I can see the forms of the flowers to a certain extent, but a lot of them are kind of like melded together because of how bright uh, some of the flowers are. I can make the green a little bit more darker and intense. The underside. Yeah, I think I have a love-hate relationship with the color green. I like green a lot because you can really play around with the yellows and the blues or even purples to intensify or make like the color warmer and stuff. And then her earrings, so let's make them- I think they're- they're silver-ish? Maybe? I don't know. I'm kind of putting it in between silver and gold, picking this kind of dusty color first. Let's look at this kind of rhinestone pattern on them. Yeah, I think we have the gist of how we want this to be. So what I'm going to do is actually lock my sketch and we're going to change our sketch color so we can make everything look a little bit softer or how we want it to look. For me, I like to make them softer. But you just have to be careful because if you're changing like a whole section together, then you might make the lines reappear. Put the ones in shadow a little bit. More of this pale color. Actually, I don't know if I like it that dark. I just don't want it to change too much after I merge my layers. I think it's okay. We'll just leave it. I don't want to do this. Okay, I guess we're, we're merging the layers. Okay, so let's adjust this a little bit. So we can do that by either adding or fixing the colors like prior or we can do them now so i'm gonna actually add do i want to add a multiply i might add an overlay yeah let's do add an overlay so i can actually make the hair even cooler than i initially have it we'll just like dim this down after i'm kind of using overlay just to shift the colors ever so slightly in some areas uh, if we want to make this a little bit warmer we can but I'm trying to keep still the overall atmosphere similar to the best of my ability. So I'm gonna knock it back a little bit. I'm gonna merge it. I'm gonna add an addition layer. So we can do a little bit of rim lighting. I locked it, didn't I? Yeah, I locked it. Okay, let's clip it. <laughs> So I can see that I want to make it even warmer. But because I want this to be at the brightest, I'm going to leave that in. So what I'm going to do is fade this just a little bit. Just so we have the indication. <laughs> Because her head is tilted a lot, but I don't know if it's to the same degree. A little, a little surgery wouldn't hurt. Fix this here, so it doesn't really look like we chopped her head. <laughs> and like I said, at the end, I'm probably going to duplicate uh, Suyin, and then I will blur part of it. So we can still keep it very soft and a little bit more atmospheric. I 
So basically when I'm cleaning up, I'm trying to get rid of all of my sketch lines for the most part. Uh, Cause that what makes it look fairly incomplete in my opinion. But I guess it depends cause some lines I do still leave in. I think one of my other ones that I really liked that I did like a background for, it, even though the colors were quite dull. Let me see if I have it. This coops. Oh, this one's not too bad. I, just because it's more of an interior though. I did blur the background though in some of the areas just to create more perspective and stuff. This one was fun, but I think I was more proud of drawing the car, if anything. This is just a straight up a gray color. Is it here? It's pretty close, but it reads so blue. Just remember guys, my knowledge of color theory or how to explain color theory is very weak. So please do not ask me like <laughs> advice on coloring. Purple outline's kind of bothering me. I think, so this happens usually uh, when I don't add a color underneath of my multiply layer. So the multiply layer, when I merge it down uh, with my colors, no longer retains its um, effect, but there's nothing underneath it. Cause that's kind of like the whole point of using multiply. It kind of goes over top, uh, whatever you need and lets the stuff underneath kind of like shine through and kind of affect the layer, but there's nothing underneath and it really kind of, um, just reverts back to whatever original color it was. And for me, it was a purple color. So I'm kind of following the reference and I'm kind of not. At this point, I'm not um, because I'm just gonna render how I see fit because I know I didn't follow the reference to a T in terms of the hair uh, flow like which way it's going and moving. So I'm just gonna go however I feel like it fits in my drawing. I find it funny. So I got my hair cut like last December, like around December 11th. For some reason I remember the day, probably because I, I really didn't like the length of my hair. Uh, but they cut it like, I think I mentioned this before, like five inches more when I said because I was about to get six inches like chopped off and then she cut around like 11 which pretty much made my hair like just at my shoulders just past my shoulders I think but now my hair is finally at the length at which is what I wanted it to be cut at it's just like right above my bust I think is what it's at because my I think my hair was if I pulled it just slightly, it would like hit my belly button. That's how long my hair used to be. But right now it's just past my bust. And I, I want to continue to grow it longer. I always like longer hair. Another piece I was working on. So I think this is what I'm going to be working on a time lapse for you guys. Is this one. Once I get stuff fixed and stuff. Because I think it'll be fun to do the lighting. Probably add a little bit more rim lighting. I need to fix his jaw because it's a little squished but i think it'd be fun to flesh this one out so this part is probably what i was regretting the most or not regretting the most anticipating i guess dreading the most would probably be the better way of saying it because i didn't really flesh out her bangs that nicely and i knew this is going to be a problem yeah really uh, the lips, this whole curvature and stuff about like the lips or the nose, yeah, it's really bothering me. Cause sometimes I make the lips like stick out too much, like the jaw, like the whole thing stick out too much. And then sometimes it's not. Okay, kind of this curving. Try to make these look as natural as possible. Have I, I haven't done this intense lighting in a long time though. I feel like 
I'm just kind of doing it. Like I do a little bit in like a lot of my uh, fan art for I think VTubers mostly. But yeah, doing kind of like these photo studies or like, it's more like a photo, it's like, yeah, it's like a photo study basically. Because I just took a screenshot of a scene from the music video. I do wish I did the one of Sohi as well. Because that umbrella would have been, I think, difficult for me to figure out how I would like to draw it. But I think it would have been fun to do too. add more hair strands. There's something magical about adding hair strands like this afterwards, especially like where it has rim lighting. It's always very fun to do. Is it necessary all the time? No. But this help with the, the hair and stuff. Because I think that's like one of the things I really like is whenever like really small or detailed things catch light. So like hair, like hair strands, uh, dust particles, as stupid as it sounds, I think dust particles look really pretty. That's okay. It's, it's not the main focus. We can also add some hair strands here. Because I actually have more of her shirt exposed here for whatever reason. Probably because I wasn't looking at what this actually looks like close enough. Hmm, I think we're done though. I keep seeing that. It's like one of those endless cycles. I think there's only sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't, but I would say, oh, like, I'm done. Continues to fix. I'm done. Continue to fix. <laughs> I'll definitely do another start to finish. Because I think it'll be fun to do another one. And maybe we'll do another one of a rocket punch fan art. Oh, okay. Which is kind of a plus for me because I always wanted to draw more rocket punch fan art as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take scene, I'm going to duplicate her, and I'm going to take the top one and I'm going to gauge and blur it. Just to make sure, I just have to make sure this isn't, yeah, it's not locked. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna take, oh wait, I have to do this. Wait a second. <laughs> Duplicate. And do it like this. So, merge down. I forgot, I should have considered this a little bit more. So I'm blurring everything together a little bit. And then I will take a giant eraser and put everything that I want back into focus. So this will be majority of her face and the left side. And I will slowly uncover the right side. But you can see there's like a little bit of a transition here. Something very blurred to kind of like partially blurred and then me kind of revealing it but I want to make sure her face is completely not covered and you can kind of check here too uh let's see last thing I'm gonna do is add an overlay layer because I am picky I am I'm wanting to add more warmth to this this is still too warm so I can always keep knocking back certain parts if I need to that. This looks really pretty. It is too saturated though. So I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down so you guys can see it while I'm adjusting. So you can see without the filter. I like it like that. I also like it like this. It's a different kind of color temperature. So let's see. Kind of like a happy medium. So you can pull out a little bit of that purple in here. Okay, right, but I think that is it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's session, but before we end 
I am going to show you guys the time lapse. Kind of struggled with the sketching, a lot of adjusting. Background, so very janky background. Getting some shapes in. And a lot of this, like I said, is trial and error. So every time I undo, you guys don't see it, but I would have been undoing, redoing every single time to check the shapes uh, after and before I blur so that we can get something that I like. Getting the light to kind of peer through and scatter a little bit. Even more scattering. I think I should add a little bit more here because there is a little bit more here. This is just kind of like giant shapes. It doesn't look as saturated or blown out for you guys, actually. Kind of putting in rough colors. I So at this point, this is what the rough colors look like. And then I'm adjusting the sketch color lines to match. We kind of fixed out and buffed out her face a little bit. We added the addition to this side. Add a little bit of blue overlay. So just, yeah, and this is where we're at. Uh, now I could add a noise filter. I actually don't think I want it as warm as I thought. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll pull it back just a bit, but this is where we're at. Uh, I think we're done. I'm just gonna put my signature somewhere and then we'll be good to go. Probably post this on Twitter. See if I can find any other Rocket Punch fans. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoy today's video and watching me draw some Rocket Punch fan art, specifically of Rocket Punch's Seiyun. Probably would've been easier for me to rewrite it, but whatever. Yeah, uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!